Welcome back to my notebook on industrial optimization. This is part two, covering multi-block structures and taking tile entities. It is currently the 3rd of December, 2013. In the uh, previous episode, or chapter, uh, one of the two largest factors that we've covered on reducing the CPU load of servers is ticking tile entities and the various nets. Uh, as mentioned before, uh, multi-block structures are potentially one of the uh, greatest sources of uh, unintended ticking tile entities. So let's go ahead and cover those. Uh, what multi-block structures are is anything that requires more than one block to do something. Uh, this it was initially uh, done in the double chest from vanilla Minecraft. Um, it's followed soon after by, uh, I believe IC2 had its reactors going multi-block, and from there it just kind of bloomed into the uh, new cool thing. Uh, to some extent they do look pretty cool, uh, just with uh, more surface area to do things. And uh, a lot of people, once they figure out how to do a multi-block structure, that's what they kind of focus on. Unfortunately, they crush servers. Uh, now, this isn't saying that one of them is going to be the end of the server, but it's the kind of developer mentality of, oh, I can do multi blocks now, so I'm going to just focus on multi block structures for my entire mod. And that needs to be addressed. Um, forestry Bees was kind of the first uh, thing that came to mind when I thought of this. Uh, if we look at the apiary, which is a single block uh, bee house, versus the alveary, which is a multi block bee house, uh, the apiary has it's a well, single block. It runs at 10% speed, and it can't be automated. Now, the alveary, which is supposedly the upgrade, is full speed. Unfortunately, it's also 27 blocks, and it only runs one B. So, uh, there was some discussion as to uh, why this change was needed. Uh, I do agree on the, the need for the change. However, uh, a certain couple people on the Forgecraft server, which is supposed to be the developer testing uh, server, decided that, oh, well, the, the output's too high, so we need to, uh, here we go, B output too high, nerf B output. So that sort of logic wasn't probably the best call. So in order to see why this is bad, uh, you're going to need to realize that in order to have any sort of realistic production that's going to be useful, you're going to need at least two to three bees. And that's just for maybe one or two people sharing sharing production, uh, maybe for food. The uh, honeyed slice, I believe it is. Uh, if you're looking for uh, larger projects or any sort of industrial automation, you're going to need eight to twelve bees. And that's assuming that you can get the higher uh, higher production outputs. So at this point you're for forced to decide, well do you want a single uh, apiary or 27 of the up upgraded alvearies? And what this boils down to is uh, multiply whatever you decide by 8 to 12 and suddenly you have a rather significant amount of uh, multi-block parts all of which need to update, all of which need to keep track of each other, and suddenly you go from maybe five or six uh, ticking tile entities to five or six hundred ticking tile entities for one person. Now multiply this by 10 or 12 people on the server who are that far along, and suddenly you see why your server is dying rather rapidly. Uh, another popular balancing point is people thinking oh well this output's too high so we're going to go ahead and cut the output in half to maybe slow people down. In theory it works, in practice uh, 
people who have played the mods more than once are going to know maybe a couple of shortcuts. Uh, if they've done very large builds before, they're probably going to know more than one or two shortcuts. So they're going to immediately turn around and say, oh hey, you just cut the, the output in half. I'm going to go ahead and double the number of production uh, objects that I have. Congratulations for doubling the number of ticking tile entities, ticking tile entities on our server. So, uh, to address this, I've come up with a couple of points. Uh, from a design standpoint, uh, the multi-block structure should have a single block equivalent. Uh, probably that costs a small amount more. Uh, for the uh, the bee houses, if you have 27 blocks, uh, simply craft each layer into a single object, and then surround it with maybe some obsidian and ender pearls, and get a single uh, single block alveary. Uh, I would love to see someone add that as a mod. It would probably reduce a couple people's uh, server load down. And I'm sure that someone who's done or has personally seen a uh, several chunk area filled with alvearies, uh, you suddenly realize that, uh, yeah, single block alveary, probably not the worst des uh, design decision ever. So, also, don't go assuming that something is too expensive to have more than one. Uh, I have seen or personally built, uh, and this is on a single single map, uh, three of the Mark I uh, Greg Tech Fusion co uh, coils. Those were usually considered to be very, very expensive. Uh, to me, it was a matter of, oh, well, I've got one. It's okay, why don't I just build three? Okay, and I, I believe I was actually on the way to building a fourth when the map reset. Um, the next map, I built two of the Mark II fusion coils. Um, I've also seen chunks filled with alvearies, logistics networks, and I was actually the cause of this one. Um, I did personally build a logistics network that was mu uh, measured in square kilometers. I believe it was about 1.2, but uh, the point still stands. When you start getting that large, you're going to start having issues, so the developers need to have uh, some sort of answer for building that large. So, from a resources required standpoint, the multi-block structures are fine, but if you're going to need more than two or three, and I'm not looking at Greg for this because I don't believe anyone besides a handful of people would ever think about building one, more than one fusion coil. Um, if you're going to realistically need more than two or three for the average player, you're going to want to have a single block option uh, just to have it. Uh, and actually, if we return to Greg Tech, uh, the Railcraft tank structure versus the Greg Tech Quantum Tank, this is a perfect example. Uh, the Railcraft tank is 11 by 10 or 10 by 11, however you want to look at it. Uh, it holds roughly 20,000 buckets for the iron one. I believe you can double that for the steel one. It's also almost 600 tile into these, uh, 584 for the full-size tank. Uh, you can do a little bit of math and figure out the, uh, I believe it's 16, uh, no, it's more than 16. It's 16 buckets per tile, but not every tile is a, uh, actual block, but it still boils down to not very many buckets for a, uh, a ticking tile entity. I have seen them filled. I have seen several of them filled with uh, creosote oil, uh, actual oil, fuel, honey. Uh, at one time we had a city on, the, on a server, and we had it filled with these tanks, and the tanks were getting filled. Um, on the other hand, the Greg Tech Quantum Tank uh, it's one dial entity. It's a single block. And I'm still trying to fill it. I think someone made a joke that they would start, um, uh, start a map with one and start pumping water into it and see how far they got before the, uh, the server got rolled to a new map. So, with that in mind, uh, to Forgecraft and the mod devs. And yes, I did say I would be naming names. Uh, here I go. You guys really need to expand your testing base. 
Uh, Direwolf20, pretty popular guy. He loves his 9x9s. Uh, unfortunately, that's not probably the best testing environment. So, a little bit of advice. Take the largest build you've done and double it. And know that if you do that, someone's going to have built that large. Double it again. Someone's probably also going to have built that large as well. And if you double that again, that's probably the size of my base. So, I mean, double it again, and I'm trying to find a way not to crush the server that I'm on and build that size. So, uh, the last point, people build a lot larger than 9 by 9s uh, Some people that I know, when you say 9 by 9 they don't think blocks, they think chunks. So, if you're thinking, oh, there's no way that someone's going to build more than one fusion reactor on the server, or, oh, the, the server's not going to have more than one fusion reactor, period, um, I can probably safely say that I've seen multiple people multiple people have multiple reactors in their base so that is the conclusion of part two uh, the next part will be on generator analysis so until then think big